and let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we gather here today at this moment to celebrate the death of your Son, to celebrate what he accomplished on the cross, magnify him, I pray, in our hearts. Jesus, it is in your name we pray. Amen. Please open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Have you recently thought about death? Have you thought recently about what happens after you die? Have you recently thought about where you will go after your death? There are only two destinations, and death ushers every single person into one of those two eternal realities. And one's view of the cross reveals where that person is headed when they die. During this time, during the Lord's Supper, during communion, we're here to remember Christ. We're here to remember his death, his body that was given and his blood that was shed. Please follow along as I read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Chapter 1, verse 18. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. There are two categories of people represented here in this verse. There are the ones that are perishing and the ones that are being saved. And the distinguishing mark between these two categories is their view of the word of the cross. So what is this word of the cross? Simply put, it's the gospel. The message of the cross is about a holy God's righteous judgment of a sinful people. It's about God demonstrating his great compassion at great cost to himself. It's about God the Father sending his son to earth to condescend into human flesh. It's about the son of God living a perfect life, sinless life. It's about the son of God, the Messiah, the Christ, shedding his blood and being executed on a Roman cross. It's about God the Father pouring out his wrath on his son in the place of sinners. It's about Jesus dying for his people. It's about Jesus rising in victory on the third day. And it's about his grace and his compassion that is offered to everyone who repents and believes. And it's about believers, the rescued, the saved, spending eternity with him after they die. How the two categories of people in this verse view the gospel indicates what eternal destination they're headed towards. Look at the first half of verse 18. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. That first category of people, those who are perishing, they believe the word of the cross is foolishness. That word for foolishness is where we get the word moron. Those that are perishing believe the gospel is moronic. They don't get it. They don't believe it. It doesn't make sense. They can't rationalize it. And a sinful fallen mind can never rightly understand and rationalize the gospel.
I was once a fool who was perishing. I didn't view myself as that bad. I could look around and I saw plenty of other people that were worse. By my own standards and by society standards, they were much worse. I certainly didn't believe in a view of a holy God. I didn't believe that God would punish me when there are all these others. He can't be sending everybody to hell. And I may not have used the word foolishness, but by my thoughts and my actions, I considered the message of the cross foolish. But praise God that he loves to take fools and makes them objects of his compassion. So the question is how do you view the message of the cross? Do you see it as foolishness? By your own admission, you would say that it's foolish, you don't get it, you don't buy it. Then as the tray comes by, just please pass those, pass those by, pass them by. This is a time for believers. But please consider that this verse says that you are perishing. That's what this verse says. That's where you're headed. You will stand before God. And you will be judged for your sins. And you will be declared guilty. And you will spend an eternity suffering the penalty of your sin. But it doesn't need to be that way. You can be rescued. You can be rescued today. You have an opportunity. Confess that sin. Turn from it. Let go of it. Join him and then join us. If you would say that you are a believer and you know that you are in unrepentant sin, your heart, your heart is hardened to your sin. Please, confess that right now. Take that time. Take this time. Confess that. Turn from it and join us. Believers, I want you to look at the second half of verse 18. But to us who are being saved, it, the gospel, the message of the cross, is the power of God. The second category of people here is identified by the phrase, us who are being saved. Paul uses the inclusive pronoun us. He's identifying with these believers. This category is every believer. And every believer has been saved, is being saved, and will be saved. For every believer, the word of the cross, the gospel, is the power of God. The gospel is the instrument that God chose to demonstrate his power. And by that message, you were saved from your perishing. You were given new life. You were made a new creation. You were given new desires. You were given a love for God when you were an enemy of God. And the wrath that you deserved was poured out on Christ. Believer, the word, the cross, this gospel, it's all about a person. It's all about Jesus. And here we get to remember his blood that was shed and his body that was given. Do that right now. As the men come forward and they pass the, out the elements, please take communion on your own and I will close our time in prayer when we're done.